Hello, I'm Daniela. In today's video, I'm going to show you how I wrap rings with yarn or threads to make these interesting round shapes to use in my slow stitching. Now, the beauty of this is you can use pre-existing rings, something as simple as a hair elastic or a rubber band, or you can use something from the hardware store, like a washer. You can also make your own rings, and I'll show you how I do this in the upcoming video. The interesting thing to note with these rings is that depending on the thread or the yarn, the thickness, and the colors that you use, you can get a completely different effect. Now, the beauty in using circles in your work is there are so many possibilities. You can overlap them. You can use them as a focal point. You can use them as a spotlight to really show something in particular in your work. So this is how I go about doing it. So wrapped rings are a beautiful tool to use in your slow stitching pieces. Here are some examples of how I use them where I take the wrapped ring and I attach it to my piece. Now I'm working on a series of round pieces, so these wrapped rings really emphasize the roundness from the piece, and they're really quite charming because of the colors you can use. They come in all sorts of sizes, and there are different ways to make them. I'm just going to show a simple wrap today, but I think it's quite lovely and quite beautiful. Now the beauty of making these is you can use just already pre-made washers. That's the basis for the ring that I use on most of them. However, you can make your own just with some wire, and I'll show you that in a moment. When you use washers, you want to make sure you get a kind that doesn't rust because you don't want it to ruin your work. So aluminum washers or rust-free washers, stainless, or work really well. I love these little nylon ones. They come in white or dark, and they come in an abundance of sizes, particularly if you purchase a set. So one of the things to consider is you can get different widths of the washer, as well as the size itself, but you can see the thickness varies here. You can use many things. You don't need a washer, but I'm going to show you how you can use wire to create your washer if you don't have a set of washers, or you want to make a custom size ring. So to do that, I just take some wire, whatever I have on hand. This is a rather thick wire, and that's nice because it holds up well. And then I just take whatever object I have that's round that I want to use for my size ring. I can use this paintbrush, I could use a cup, depending on the size I want to make. It's really up to you. I like to take a piece of wire, maybe four to six inches long, and then I clip it. From there I wrap a few rings around my brush. In this case it's a brush, but whatever I'm going to use. And I really work it to make it that nice rounded shape. I'll press, press the edges down as best I can. And sometimes they stick up anyway by nature of the wire. And then I can just gently pull it apart. Now I have three layers here. If I wanted to make a really thick wire or wrapped ring, I could use all three, but I just want a single one. So I'm going to trim that edge just so I have a nice flat edge, and then I'm only going to trim right up to where that edge meets. And that way I only have one layer for my work. Then I'll just press it down. Now, depending on the size wire you have, you can tape it shut so that your ring stays shut while you're wrapping it. And that's the easiest way to do it because the wire will give while you're wrapping it. But you can leave it as it is. And then after your wire is complete, you just want to be gentle with it. And when you tack it down, just know that you might have to readjust the shape. And that's one of the reasons why I prefer using the washers, particularly the ones that are already sealed. So I'm just going to choose this washer because this is the one I'm going to use the demonstration on in class today. And I want to show you how I go about wrapping the washer. Now to make our wrapped ring, you can use any yarn, embroidery floss, or thread that you have to wrap it. The thinner the thread, the more you'll need to get around your ring. And if you have a variegated thread, I think that's very effective because it creates a very interesting result. Again, you can tailor your thread to your project. So if you know you want, say, a red ring, just use your red thread. I like using yarn because it's nice and thick and textured, and it creates a very interesting ring. So I'll set this aside. Now if you notice here with the rings, I have two. I have one that has like a little cute border on the edge, and I have this one that's just wrapped plain. I'm sure there are other additional ways that you can 
create your rings. I don't crochet, so I'm not exactly sure all the different methods, but I'll show you the method I use to create this one with this little nice edge here. This one is just a simple wrap where I go round and round and round the piece, feeding my yarn from inside and outside all the way around. But I'll show you how I create this. Now, you don't need any tools, but I like to have a little needle here that has a thick enough eye that I can feed my thread through. It just makes it easier for me, but it's not necessary. And then I'll just take a bunch of thread. So I have probably a, a yard of thread here at least, and I'll just feed it through this eye of the needle here. This is a large darning needle. So I'll pull my thread through and to start with, I just feed my needle through the center here. And right at the edge, I'll tie a knot. It's just a simple knot where I make my loop and I go in and pull my thread through. And I can even make a double knot if I want, but the single knot is fine. It holds it in place for now. And I have about a three inch tail. So from here, I keep my thread a little taut take my needle, I go in again, and I come through that loop behind the thread, behind that loop, and it creates a little border. So I pull the thread taut, come in from behind, and then go behind that thread again. And the more I do this, you get to see how the thread crosses, and it makes that little edge so again, I'll try and do this a little slower. I come up with my thread, holding it here with my left hand taut. I can pull all the thread through, you see the loop, and then I just go back underneath that thread. And if you see the cross here, you can see where it's making that little border. And I'll just continue this all the way around, repeating this step over and over again. And I'll speed this along so you can see how it produces the interesting result. So now it produces that edge, which is very pretty, and because I'm using variegated thread, it produces a little variation in the coloring that you see. I'm getting a lot of gray right now, but you can see in that long piece of thread, there's white and black, and depending on how much thread we use as we go, you might get to see that. And starting to see a little variation in the gray. Went from a lighter gray to a darker gray. If that tail gets caught, just set it aside. Now as I go, I'm tightening it so I don't see any of that washer. So now when I get to the end of my run here, I want to make one knot that knots the end of my thread with this piece from the beginning. So I'll just take my fingers, make a loop, and knot right through that. Maybe make a second knot just to make sure it's secure. And I'll wrap it around one more time, going one more stitch. Now if I'm gonna use this right away, I'll just snip it very close to the edge of that knot. But since I'm not sure how I'm going to use this particular ring, I'm just going to leave a little tail on it for storage so that when I store it in my jar here, I have a little loop and that gives me a little leeway of how I want to use my wrapped ring. If I'm using embroidery floss or thinner thread that I'm going to stitch through my fabric, because I don't think I would stitch this heavy yarn through the fabric, I would leave a longer tail so that I can just continue to stitch over the piece to hold it right down to the fabric. So here you can make any size ring and just wrap it around and here I use three ply of wire to get this larger ring using the same yarn. So I like to keep a bunch of these rings in a jar and I use them as needed. The beauty of this is I can also create the rings as I need in specific colors or with specific yarns. If something inspires me then I'll use that around the ring. I hope you found this video helpful and if you did please give it a thumbs up and be sure to subscribe. Thanks for joining me today.